What's up, guys? Rick here with your betting and one and done preview for this week's Mayakoba Golf Classic. So what we'll do is we'll look at outright bets for the week. We'll go through a handful of matchups and we'll talk about some options for your one and done leagues. This is the final PGA Tour event of the calendar year, but there will still be plenty of golf. There will be European Tour, uh, at least tool coverage. I don't know if I'll be making videos, but uh, while the European tour is going on, I'll have uh, the cheat sheet up, all that good stuff. And then uh, remember that we have a live chat on Wednesday, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel for all your final questions, uh, weather, potential tea time information, ownership for DFS purposes, all that good stuff. Um, if you've not signed up for a William Hill account and you're in New Jersey, Indiana, or Illinois, uh, head over to rickrungood.com slash Hill. For whatever the current best offer is, usually a couple hundred dollars in free bets is what I've been seeing. Uh, helps you, it helps me, helps William Hill. And then finally, uh, if you want to gamble a little bit more, uh, you can bet against me for a rickrungood.com uh, membership. Yeah, that's right. This is the one time a year that you can get a promotion on a membership, all of the tools that you see for rickrungood.com. Here's how it works. Go to rickrungood.com slash Mexico. Sign up for a six-month or a yearly membership. Then whatever the winning score is in Mayakoba this week, I'm going to refund you that amount. So if it's 18 under par, I refund you 18%. If it's 30 under par, I refund you 30%. So we can gamble on this a little bit. And it's uh, uh, my thank you. Uh, to you guys, the one time a year that I do discount the membership. So go take advantage of that. You have until Thursday morning, like that first tea time. That's when I'm shutting it off. I'm not going to uh, you know, watch two rounds and, and let you guys uh, see that 30 under is coming or something like that. But get in before the tournament starts. Um, all right. I think that's it. I think we can get to uh, the betting board. All right, so here's the William Hill uh, betting board for this week. Justin Thomas is your betting favorite, six and a half to one. Brooks Kepka next at twelve to one. Harris English sixteen to one. Um, I I love JT. Right, I think if you guys have been following along, you know that uh, the the style that JT plays uh, is usually very high floor, but also high ceiling. Like it's kind of weird, right? I mean, he's such a great tee to green player. He's such an, a great a great approach player. He doesn't really play himself out of tournaments, which is what we've seen over his last, um, I think it's five events, right? No no worse than 12th in any of his last uh, five. He's coming off a fourth place finish at the Masters. Uh, and he just and he still can't putt, right? He's still like a negative putter. Uh, if he just gains a stroke or two on the greens, uh, he's very much liable to win any golf tournament that he plays. Now, am I willing to lay six and a half to one on it? No, he's not going to make my, my final card here. Uh, but I would rather bet, say, Justin Thomas at six and a half than maybe a Brooks Kepka at 12. I know that kind of sounds crazy, but uh, Kepka a bit more volatile in these types of situations. We've got two good starts out of him in a row. Interested to see if he's able to continue the mo momentum this week down in Mexico. Uh, the place that I'm starting my card, and I've been I've been very clear about this, uh, certainly over the course of the week, he's been, you know, I, I, I put it in the slack earlier this week. He was a big focus of the... Uh, of the DFS show, and it's it's Abraham answer. So William Hill currently has currently has him at eighteen to one. You can get uh, you can get him at twenty. Uh, DraftKings has him at twenty. I got him at twenty two when this thing opened up. Uh, so that's that's where I went to start my card. Which, by the way, in this off season here, looking to create a lot more evergreen content around betting strategies and stuff like that. And, and one of the requests, and I think this is a great request, uh, was about like how to build a, a betting card, um, which I, I talk about a lot. Like I talk about my card a lot, but I don't really talk about the behind the scenes of it, how I came to these numbers, how I, how I narrowed it down to this many guys. So, um, that I, I will talk about that during the, the during the off season here. Uh, but Abraham answer leads my card. And, and there's a lot of reasons why I don't think I need to rehash them all. If you were watching the DFS video, if you've been paying attention, uh, you know, El Camilion is just a, a shorter course. You know, we've seen so many short hitters, short but accurate hitters win here. Uh, you're talking about Brandon Todd, Matt Kuchar, Fred Funk. Uh, Brian Gay is one here, right? I mean, it's just it, it really does benefit 
the accurate drivers of the golf ball, which is what Abraham Answer is. And and the way that he's popped at times, uh, still without a win, but you're talking about a fourth place finish at the Shriners, a very good 13th at the Masters, 15th at a WGC. I mean, he plays all the big events. He plays all these deep WGC fields. He's had uh, a great run at this tournament specifically. I think he's got three straight top 25s coming in, including an eighth place finish last year. Uh, it just, everything to me says... Abe answer. And I think it says it to everybody too. And that's why the line has moved from uh, 22 down to 20 or 18 in some spots. So I, I would probably wouldn't go any, I don't think it's going to get any lower than 18. I probably wouldn't go any lower than that. Uh, but answer is the top guy on, on my card here. If you didn't want, uh, if you didn't want an uh, answer, but you want you want somebody in that twenty five range. Victor Hovland's really appealing, and we're going to talk about Hovland, uh, especially in the one and done portion of this. But um, just real quick, has this been the most quiet, you know, run of top fifteens recently? You know, fifteenth in Houston, twelfth at the CJ Cup, thirteenth at the U.S. Open. I mean, he's just piling up these top twenty five finishes, and. We're not really talking about it. And he's been great off the tee. He's been great from tee to green. He's been a great ball striker. Um, we're going we're gonna to save him. We're going to talk about him later in the one and done portion of this. But um, I do think there's something to guys who have a weaker short game getting on those past palm greens that have a little bit of a longer blade of a little bit longer blade of grass. Um, sometimes it mitigates poor putting. And that's where. Victor Hovland's lone PGA Tour win came was on Paz Palum Green, so um, he was someone that I that I that I feel pretty comfortable with. And and I got to tell you, you know, there is such a benefit, and, and of course this is obvious, to seeing the betting board as soon as it comes out, right? I mean, I, I've got I've gotten better numbers on basically all of these guys. Joaquin Neiman, uh, I have at forty, he's down to thirty three in some spots. And again, if you're not and I'm not a professional gambler, right? Like I'm not grinding ROI over the course of the year for this. So maybe I don't care about three points or five points or seven points. Uh, but it's just nice to know you get a good number, right? Like that's just part of it. That's part of the part of the game, part of the research process, part of the fun is trying to get the best number that you can. Um, so you really got to, you know, be prepared for this when the, when the, when the numbers come out, but, but Neiman is interesting and I'm going to pull up his, his strokes gain database here because, um, you know, last, I, I almost said last week, it was two weeks ago. The RSM classic, his last start was his first start back since he tested positive for COVID-19 and you can look at his rounds and you can almost, uh, you can almost see it. I mean, so first of all, he played the plantation course first, so we don't have his strokes gain data for round number one, but he shot like a 73. I think he was one or two over part, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, that could have been the end of it goes out, plays really well or well enough on Friday gains nearly two and a half strokes on the field. Um, his Saturday round was a little iffy, didn't play all that well, shot a 70. Then he closes with a 65. That's his best round of the day or best, best round of the week. And I love it when guys close with their best round. Usually conditions are, uh, they tend to be a bit more difficult on Sundays. You get the, the, the most difficult pin positions. There's a bit of now, now not that Neiman was in contention, but there's a bit of like, you know, different vibes on a Sunday. So when you go out, do that, maybe you can carry that over into your next, into your next start. I know he's been a winner on the PGA tour, obviously, Someone to keep an eye out. I, again, I got him at 40. I see him at like 35 or 33 right now. Starting to get into an area where he becomes very similar to like Ricky Fowler. Like, an, <clears throat> excuse me, in that 28 spot. So I don't think it's going to go any lower. Uh, but Neiman is certainly a name that interests me. And then there's a couple of guys even, even further down. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've talked a bit about Brendan Todd this week. So I won't, I won't rehash that. He's your defending champion. He's 50 to one. He's been dealing with a broken toe. If you think that has been the reason that his results have been hindered a little bit, uh, if that's the reason, it's very easy to write that reason off. It's very easy to say, well, he's working through a broken toe. Now he's had an extra week of rest and he's been playing through it and blah, blah, blah. He didn't have to walk four rounds or whatever last week. Uh, this would be a good spot to pick up a Brendan Todd, who's your defending champion. I mean, I see him at 55, 55 to one. Let me see what William Hill has him at. 45. I mean, DraftKings has him at, four, at 55, so you should probably head over there. Um, further down, uh, there was other a couple other names. HV3 is incredibly interesting. So Howard Varner III, um, 
for him, it's all about putting four rounds together. I'm going to show you his, his strokes gain database here. <clears throat> and you're going to see a lot of impressive stuff and you're going to see some stuff that's like, oh man, this, this is, this is pretty terrible. So let me pull this up for you. So this is by round in the 2021 season. So that started at the Safeway. And you can see from tee to green, he's been pretty phenomenal. Only, I, I mean, I would say only twice he's lost significant strokes from tee to green, right? He's lost four times, uh, but two of them were less than a half a stroke uh, in a round. So I, I would say twice he's basically he's lost more than a, a stroke per round from tee to green. Otherwise, he's been great. The ball striking's been great. The around the green stuff's been fine recently. Uh, it's the putter that's let him down at times. And and maybe the driver. So what, what's interesting is, you know, he's he's got top 15 finishes. He's got missed cuts in there as well. Like it's it's such an interesting dynamic for HV3 right now where he's he's shown us the upside, which I think is incredibly valuable in a situation like this, especially at I think he was 70 to one. Yeah. 70 to one. Um, does he have to get over the hump of a Sunday or being in contention? Of course he does. Has he put himself there a couple of times in the last year? Yes. Does he have to get over it? Yes. But, uh, he has the game that pops. If he can do this for two, three, four rounds, he's going to find himself in contention. So it, it's so interesting to see a guy who has at least the upside at 75 or 70 to one. Uh, it's a it's a bit shocking, quite honestly. I I I like that. There's there's going to be a mental side of it, but I like it. And then if you're really trying to round this out with something deep, I mean, I've I've talked about uh, you know Doug Gim this week, 125 to one. I've talked about um, uh, who was my other guy down here? Oh oh, so like Peter Malnati, like his top ten number is ten to one. Uh, he's got a couple of top tens recently. He played well, I think, for like. 27 holes at the RSM Classic before kind of fading over his final two and a half rounds. But again, now I'm down in a range where I want guys that can actually pop. Like, I don't care if, the, if, if, uh, that's a bad example. I was going to say Brian Gay. That's a bad example. I don't care if Aaron Wise finishes 42nd 10 weeks in a row. That is of almost zero value to me, right? You're never gonna you're never gonna get paid off on a win. You're never gonna get paid off on a top five. You're never gonna get paid off on a top ten. Um, you just never get paid on that. And and he's playing fine. You just never get paid on it. I'd rather a guy like Peter Malnati who is gonna give you a runner up. He's gonna give you a fifth place finish. He's gonna crash and burn three times. Like I'd rather have that because at least I'm getting paid ten to one on the weeks that he finishes in the top ten. So there's just different styles of golfers down here. Uh, Malnati. Gim, those would be guys I'd be more interested in than some of these other fine players that are just, you know, more, more consistent. Um, okay. Heads up or uh, heads up, head to head matchup simulator. So let's head over to this tool. So this is a tool on rickrungood.com, obviously, uh, where you can pit any two golfers against each other for any time period in the last like six years. And you can see who is more likely to win a four round matchup. I love this tool. I'm going to change the time frame to be the start of the 2020 season. And I've been, I have a matchup circled uh, that I've just had my eye on that I can't wait to get in here. It's Abraham answer versus Daniel Berger. I absolutely love, I have no idea who is going to be the favorite in this. Wow. I guess I should have realized that. So here, here's, I have Daniel Berger winning this 66% of the time. That's a massive number, okay? I have his money line. It should be about minus 198. He's currently minus 112 right now. So Berger, and it makes sense, right? Berger's had an unbelievable 2020. Um, I think that may be the fact that they, these odds for answer, as much as I love him this week, as much as others love him this week, it's really steamed his number up. And he's getting a lot of credit for the course history, I think Daniel Berger is being uh, penalized a bit because we haven't seen him since the Zozo Championship, right? I mean, that's the last time we saw him. Didn't play the Masters, um, didn't tee it up at RSM or anything like that. So he, he's, he's just kind of forgotten by the market at this point. And I think that as much as I love answer, to get Berger even money with answer... Um, is almost unfair. I think you'd have to take Berger here in kind of a significant way. And, and that is mostly just because 
uh, you know, it's this week. It's Mexico. It's the good course history. If this was played next week at a, I don't want to call it like a neutral site course or something like that, I think you'd see Berger's number um, a heck of a lot deeper than it is than it is right now. So this might be an advantage, uh, an opportunity to take advantage of the market kind of leaving Berger behind a little bit. Here's a good one. Corey Connors versus Ricky Fowler. Um, Ricky Fowler's not had a good year. I imagine Corey, and, and Corey Connors was better before the restart and then had to try to figure it out. I imagine Corey Connors is going to blow him away here. Eh, pretty good. 55% on Corey Connors. Uh, and you can see even more recently, like if we change this date range, and I would never do this uh, in reality, right? And I would never take this data seriously. But if we just do the last three months, I have Corey Connors winning this 83% of the time. That's just how different they've been recently. Now, I would never use that and claim this data as like anything of note. But it just shows you the divergence uh, recently between these two golfers. Uh, Corey Connors has been so much better. Ricky Fowler struggled all year long. Uh, Ricky Fowler on the verge of finishing a year in his worst uh, official world golf ranking in in quite some time. So I, I just I understand these numbers, and then even the shorter term you go, Corey Connors becomes even more significant. So they're both minus one twelve on DraftKings. I have Corey Connors should be about minus one twenty seven. Um, <clears throat> And actually, this is one of these ones where I actually kind of feel a bit more confident than that, right? 55% on Connors, uh, I might actually think it might be closer to 60%, which again, those are, in the scheme of things, are very small margins, right? They're, they're almost coin flips. But when you're talking about four rounds of golf in a very volatile sport, when you start getting up into 60% win probability, those are just massive numbers. So um, keep keep all of that in mind. Let's see if I can find one more interesting one here, because I think I found two bets already. Um... JT versus Kepka. Is that interesting? Thomas is a big favorite. Minus 162. Let's find out. Justin Thomas versus Brooks Kepka. Yeah, I have JT winning this a lot. 70% of the time. I mean, it's it's true. Kepka's not had a good year. His his is his last two tournaments have been his best two. Um, but otherwise, it has not been a good year. JT has uh, basically lapped him from day one. They've never crossed. So so the way that I have this running strokes gained uh, chart going, like they've never crossed over one another. The entire year, uh, Justin Thomas has been uh, fairly significantly better than than Brooks Kepka. I have uh, JT at two, minus 234. DraftKings has him at minus 162. So I think I might have found you three bets here, which I don't always do when I plug three matchups into the into the uh, matchup simulator here, but those are three pretty interesting ones. Uh, Connors over Fowler, JT over Brooks, and what was the other one? Oh, Berger over Answer, which is goes against my heart, but I understand why the numbers are uh, reading off that way. All right, let's talk one and done. The run good one and done is full steam ahead. I've added a rank column to the um, to to the standings here. I, I might have to adjust that. That's kind of very beta right now. I'll have to adjust this. But right now, as of this moment, heading into Mayakoba, Brandon K9 has a very small edge over a storm of shanks, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six guys between 4.6 million and 4.4 million. Uh, the two that I mentioned, then Swarm 19, Rex Grant, Logan Dempsey 20, and Brewer Jim are all just, I, I mean, neck and neck. And obviously there's a lot of tournaments to be played, but it is bunched at the top at the moment. So congrats, good, uh, good picks to those guys. Hope you can keep it going this week. Um, and then for this week, so what do we have? You know, Maya Koba, we do have some course history guys um you know we've got defending champion brendan todd we've got um russell knox has been good here i think that and i'm and i'm certainly not alone in thinking that abraham answer will probably be one of the most popular one and done picks will probably be one of the most popular um uh plays on draft kings or, or whatever daily fantasy site that you're playing on uh, certainly it is an Abe answer week. There's probably no other place you want to use him, right? Uh, I mean, I would say, unless you're going to save him for, well, it depends on what your one and done is. I assume, well, if you started with me at, uh, when did we start? The restart? Did we start at the restart? Safeway. 
20, we started the new season. So that means we still have like RBC heritage is what I was trying to get to, right? A short course that rewards uh, good drivers of the golf ball. So like, that's the, really the only other place I could consider Abraham answer uh, that I want to hold on to him. And, you know, maybe I'm holding on to Webb there. Maybe I'm holding on to, I mean, there's a lot of guys that could, that could play there and we're a, a year out from it or nine months out from it, something like that. So I, I'm not too worried about it. Um, the, the, the interesting pivot option, which I, I mentioned is Victor Hovland. This is the really interesting one. You know, he has proven to be fairly safe, right? I mean, he hasn't missed a cut in the restart. I think he's played 16 times. He's got a bunch of top 20s. He's got a bunch of top 15s recently. He, his only win came on Paz Palom Greens, which he's going to get. And you only get Paz Palom Greens like, what, three times a year? I think you get him at uh, Punta Cana. You get him at Puerto Rico. I think you get him in Bermuda as well. So maybe you get him like four times a year. And um, so the, here's your chance. Here's your chance to go back to Victor Hovland. Uh, I, I don't think I'd be burning a stud here, right? I don't think I'm playing JT or Kepka or, I, I mean, even Harris English. Harris English, you know, we saw him, we saw what he can do, what he can contend. So I'm just trying to find guys that are good fits for this week. So I, I've narrowed it down to Hovland, Answer, or Todd. Those are the three that I would be most excited about rolling out. Uh, they are all should be good course fit guys. Obviously, Todd is. He's won here before. Uh, the latter, and I think I think in popularity they'll go like this. Answer will be the most popular. Hovland and then Todd would be third. So you can kind of have a uh, a grab bag, a pick of uh, 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 that you will uh, for for this week, depending on what kind of ownership you want. Okay, that'll do it. Join me. On Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, live chat for Mayakoba, Rick Run Good YouTube channel. Go to rickrungood.com slash Mexico to get the once a year gamble promo for rickrungood.com. Whatever the winning score is at Mayakoba, I will refund you that percentage uh, of your membership for a six month or a yearly one time offer. Be in by Thursday morning. Uh, otherwise, that's it. Best of luck this week. Let me know who you're taking in one and done. Tweet me at Rick Rungood or leave a comment below. I will uh, talk to you guys soon.